Karen O'Donoghue is in the doctor's kitchen today cooking three things. The world's healthiest scone, which is packed full of nutrition, tons of protein, lots of fiber. It's incredible for your gut. That is glorious. We're also making a porridge with teff, this ancient grain that comes from Ethiopia. It was grown 8,000 BC and it's so, so packed full of nutrition. Oh my God, that yeah. is magic. And also we're doing injera bread, which is a fermented type of flatbread that is gluten-free and it's super versatile. We're putting hummus on it, but you can put loads of different things on, like curries, different vegetables. You're gonna love these three recipes and they are so, so healthy for Doctor's you. Doctor's Kitchen. Recipes, health, lifestyle. These are my 24 hour soaked teff scones, AKA the healthiest scones in the world. We're gonna crack two eggs uh -huh. and then you're gonna give them a really good whisk. Our dough has been soaking overnight. This is a mix of teff grain, teff flour, oats, chia, flax, cinnamon. And then we've used a really good olive oil um, from Two Fields. We've got some sea salt in there, some water. Now day two, all of these ingredients have been creating lots of enzymes and lots of new strains of lactic acid bacteria. We're ready to to kind of go go at it with phase two. Phase two is always adding a small amount of apple cider vinegar, a little bit of salt, some bicarb to raise the mixture because this is a gluten-free mixture, um, and then some eggs to help raise it as well. If you are vegan, you can use a vegan egg mixture of just flax and water instead. This recipe is an amazing way of getting way more prebiotic fiber into your diet, insoluble fiber, soluble fiber, loads of B vitamins. One scone has your total amount of vitamin B1 for the day, and a huge amount of omega in here. Just so, one scone? Yeah, just one scone. Wow. Yeah, has your B1 for the day. So, and, and then a huge amount of zinc. Just like a regular half a teaspoon of sea salt. So just sprinkle that over the wet mixture. When you make this at home, if you're making this soaked dough at home, you wanna let the dough exactly as Orla has it, which is like spread out and let air run through it. Because we're using seeds that are very high in fat, if you squash the mixture down, the scones you make aren't going to rise and be so voluptuous. So if you're gluten-free cooking at home, if you're gluten-free baking, and you want to get lots of omega into your diet, obviously you're going to be using chia, obviously you're going to be using flax, obviously you're going to be using a good regenerative oil. Mm. Really, really, really important when you're making anything to let it open as opposed to compact it down. People have a habit of like really smashing bread and kneading yeah, things yeah, and like yeah. just like all this. Yeah. When I'm trying to tell people just like pull it up, like mm. let it let it open up. Because I like see bake because I'm not a baker myself. I'm I'm you know learning so much from you. And I see how they treat bread on TV shows. Yes. I'm like, oh that's what I'm gonna do. Gonna yeah, like high gluten, in. low yeah, fiber. Yeah, like stretch it out. Yeah, yeah. 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 But that's so, not what we want to do this. Because absolutely there's not. No gluten in this. There's no gluten in this. Only reason you bash like that is to work gluten. Gotcha. And and, and that gluten really is just like commercial wheat that's very, very low in any sort of nutrient. So you can bash it because there's pretty much no vitamin B to speak of, mm. there's no zinc to speak of, you know, like all these vitamins and some minerals that are like lost because you're not using whole grain. Mm. Wild, <laughs> but anyway, I'm sure we'll speak about that later. So you've got your bicarbon salt and then you just want to dribble your apple cider vinegar on top to ah. make that reaction happen. We're going to put in our eggs now. You might want to get your hands in there and, and hand mix, but actually we're not going to do that. We're going to resist. Because we don't want to overwork this, it's best just to stir it kind of gently with a spoon. You know. This is so easy. So you so see how, anyway. you see, <laughs> no, it's super, I mean, it, it, couldn't, it couldn't be easier, Ruby. You can see this is very, very wet. Normally when you're making a scone mixture, it will be way drier than this. Mm. But we, we know that hydration is key to enzyme activity. And so if you want to make breads and scone mixtures and cake batters more digestible, the wetter, the better. Okay, so here we've got some white teff from Lovegrass. The biggest difference between white teff and brown teff is that white teff is higher in protein, brown teff is higher in fiber. So this mm. is 8% protein, this is the brown teff, and the white is 12 so this is really, really hard. In Ethiopia, they don't work with the grain and baked goods. They it, don't. No, they just mill it. But for me, texture is, is everything. So, yeah. you know, we're using the flour and we're using the grain. Um, and the thing with the grain root beet is it basically, it kind of works in the same way flax does. It just scrapes your colon clean because you're consuming it and you're not you're not going to digest this grain this grain is going to scrape your colon clean they did a huge amount of study on endurance levels with teff and if a bread or any recipe you make yeah. is 25 percent to 30 percent teff 
it increases your endurance levels by 25%. Wow. So it's, it's the food of the gods, right? Okay, so because we're using high fat ingredients, mm -hmm. flaxseed, chia seeds, mm -hmm. blah, 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 uh, we, we don't want to be smashing it down because okay. if we smash it down, the oil is going to compact in pockets. And when it comes out from the bake, you'll have these pockets of oil. Wow. Whenever you're gluten-free baking in particular, uh -huh. or you're baking with a high amount of seeds, don't smash, okay. just guide. Okay. Like your hands are literally there just to, 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 to guide the dough around. So that's it. So then we're going to bring our baking tray over oh, yeah. root yeah. B. But in general, we kind of go seven inches across mm -hmm. uh, and then just cut it into triangles. Yeah. So, this so goes these the are going to go in for 40 minutes. 40 minutes, all yeah. right. Just work it in there. So this is my Ethiopian breakfast. Tef porridge with a little bit of seaweed for iodine, a fried egg, some spice, banging. This one is particularly for those of you who struggle with constipation IBS or for people who just feel bloated and a little bit lethargic. Before you go to bed, you mix oats, flax, and teff together in some milk. You leave it literally in your saucepan, on the hob, ready to go. You can cover it with a tea towel if you want. You don't have to. Just let it open, let it open to the bacteria in the room and the yeast in the room. That's all gonna do this a lot of favor. But we're just gonna get the heat going on this now. So you just added uh, those ingredients with the star anise left overnight. Yes. And then no salt, sugar, nothing, just like- Yeah, just straight, it. yeah. Can you use brown as well as white teff? Yep, and you could use a mixture of the two if you want. Uh, because of this adding with flax, and you yeah. top it with something using full fat dairy milk, you're getting a really good high protein uh, recipe in a meal yeah. in the morning that's yeah. gonna keep you satiated to totally your glucose levels nice and steady because a lot of people who just have oats can have like this big glucose spike and then a corresponding crash and they feel hungry yeah. in the morning. Yeah. So this is a great way to still have oats but just you know, dampen down the, the glucose back and fit with something that's higher in protein. In general, this should take just six minutes uh, to cook. Six minutes? Yeah, so six minutes, exactly, it. six minutes. Amazing. Six minutes for, like you said, protein, fibers, yeah. vitamins, yeah. minerals. I thing, can do that for you. The, the thing with Tef, it can really stick to a saucepan if you, if you don't stir it regularly. Oh, so uh -huh. for the six minutes, it's your morning meditation, yeah. just stir it, yeah. just keep stirring. Iodine levels are quite low in people who follow a vegan vegetarian diet. Rupee has some amazing corner seaweed here that we're gonna sprinkle on. Fortunately, they have the iodine stated in the nutritional labels on the back of the package, which is fantastic. So you actually know what you're getting. But in general, if you are trying to add more iodine to the diet, seaweed is the hackiest way you can do that. Mm. Um, two teaspoons is preferable, um, but obviously build it up to your taste buds. And then we're also gonna um, use some black pepper in this recipe. For those of you who are vegetarian um, or who are doing workouts in the morning and you want to get more protein into the diet, we're just going to do a fried egg. Mm. Um, quick note on eggs. There's a huge difference in a regeneratively, organically farmed egg versus just like a regular shop-bought egg. The omega in a regeneratively farmed egg is six times the amount of omega in a shop-bought egg. This is coming together really nicely. It's Amazing. Thickening it smells now. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is looking Stunning. like exactly how I would have my Perfect. porridge in the morning. Awesome. That's so simple. So then we are ready to like the go for it. Porridge in the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Are gonna just put like oh, so good. a little bit it's of seaweed <laughs> here. Oh, I love it! Wow, the flavors in this. Star anise, cardamom. That's a perfectly cooked egg. Uh, <laughs> so that's gonna go there. Nice. If you want a bit more prebiotic fiber in your diet, maybe do like a raw honey. Personally, I think the maple syrup goes really well with the seaweed. Man, um, I'm loving the sweet savory thing. Oh my God. Mind your leg there, really. That is phenomenal. The saltiness of that seaweed. Yeah, the seaweed, man. With the, the sweet maple is phenomenal. Honestly, mm. that's so good. Mm. Oh, that's that's incredible. Mm. Tastes good. Oh, all right. Quick, 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 quick. Okay. 40 minutes on the dot. Wow, great. Yeah, that's these so smell good. amazing. The spice does smell amazing, doesn't yeah. it? The cinnamon. Oh, wow. Yeah, these are perfect. So we'll just wow. uh, knock them on the bottom. Okay. And if they feel kind of nice and crispy, there we go. Nice and hollow. 
Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike, in general, we'd like to let them cool down for 10 minutes before cutting into them. Okay. Uh, do I ever do that at the bakery? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, good. Um, yeah, we'll just cut this one open. So, oh yeah, these, these feel good. So obviously, the longer they cool, it's going to cut more evenly, etc., etc. Oh, with wow. with all grains, nuts, and seeds. As soon as you mill them, there is like a settling in period, mm. especially with things like flaxseed, where the oil content is so high and it's so alive with enzyme activity when you're sourcing from good farmers. That oil, it, it needs a resting period to almost like evaporate some of it, its wetness. You see, like you've kind of got like these wet pockets. Mm. They won't be wet if you use milled flaxseed. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, the benefit of milling in advance is that you don't get this wetness. Okay. Um, so that's preferable if you want a yeah. drier scone. One of these scones is 43% your fibre for the day. 43%? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit of honey and you've already yeah. put some butter on this. So I'm going to give this one a try. Mmm. The texture is good, isn't it, from the teff? Yeah. It's got like a satisfying crunch to it. Yeah. And there's like a, a, a grittiness. Yeah. In the, um, uh, with the teff. That is glorious. Uh, so this is my injera wrap, perfect for sweet or savory, and it's way better than any wrap you're gonna get anywhere else. When you are making injera at home, you only ever wanna use coconut oil. No olive oil in making of injera. Uh, you can use butter, however, butter is going to make the batter a lot wetter, mm. um, and so we found that coconut oil much better. Okay. So you always pour from the outside in, kind of like a, a snail's shell, and you want some bubbles to pop. You kind of want bubbles to pop kind of in, around and up to the middle, and then once those bubbles have popped, you want to lid it, and you want to let the steam cook this side. Use case for this bread is females with bad period pain. Oh, really? Game changer. Really? Yeah, game changer. We have loads of females who are now using this in the run up to their cycle um, and throughout their cycle, um, and oh, they're wow. not using uh, they're not using oh, ibuprofen or or any any anti inflammatory medication anymore. So this is our little Tef wrap. Like one and a half of those is your daily iron for the day. So if iron deficiency is something you're struggling with, this is the hackiest way of getting more iron into you. You've got your complete set of amino acids, you've got your vitamin C, you've got a huge amount of zinc, magnesium, complex B vitamins, there's calcium in there. The Ethiopian diet is the best diet in the world as far as I'm concerned. It's incredible when you're, like, when you're talking about it and all I'm thinking is just ferments and ferments. Yes, it's all fermented ferments, repeat. All the, every, yeah. the food is live, it's yes, living. it's living. Whereas, you know, I think what we were talking about earlier is we've lost a lot of the um, uh, history and the, the origins of food that make it so... Nutritious. Yeah, but, and, and life-giving. Life-giving, yeah. absolutely. Mm. There was a really good study conducted in America in the 1940s called Are We Well Fed? Uh -huh. And it basically documents this time right before the 1900s. That's looking amazing, Ruby. <laughs> right before the 1900s, uh, you know, we, we didn't we didn't consume vitamins in the way we do now. Yeah. Um, like our food was alive. We were soaking. We were fermenting. Mm. We ate whole grain diets. And this document, which I'll share with you, it, it, it talks about governments all over the world in the early 1900s were like. Something's happened to society. Mm. Society has become really anxious. People are like all over the place and they're not making good decisions anymore. And it was directly correlated with the food system changing. The food system changing from one that was live to not live. These lend themselves, of course, to being savory or sweet. Uh, but today, we're gonna do you guys a savory one. I know Rupee's a big fan of greens. Yeah. Um, so I thought we definitely need to get some salad leaves in here. So. Just do like a nice little scrape of hummus. Uh, and then let's do two segments of this amazing scottage cheese. Um, and then we can do just some leaves in here. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of olive oil as well, just to wet the leaves. Mm. And then maybe some black pepper and salt. Just so simple. So simple, mate. So And if, you, if I made a batch of these like on a Sunday, let's say. They'll um, be okay for 24 hours, Rupi. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They need to, they're, they're always best made fresh, gotcha. but 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. But you can keep the batter Absolutely. and just keep it in the fridge. Oh man, the batter, you can keep the, the batter for a month. Batter, right? yeah. yeah. Just want to roll this up for your train journey to work. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it in some paper and you're good to go. Oh, amazing. That's Do you want to try one? Yeah, 100% try. Mm. Come on now, Ruby. Open your mouth. <laughs> 
say something. This is a proper big bite. It's so good. This is so good. Yeah. Oh god. It's got like a slight sourness. Mm-hmm. But the cheese is so good. You want to tuck in, guys? Mm. That's so good. Yeah. Mm. Honestly, so good.